Good morning, Stampers. Welcome to Team Stampit's December blog hop. I hope you're enjoying it and all these fabulous things that everybody's putting together. Today, since it is a New Year's theme, I thought about, well, every time I go to a New Year's party, I usually bring wine or champagne. So today, I'm going to show you how to make this wine bottle gift box. It's, it's made out of your DSP and it covers your wine barrels or wine bottles. And then I just added a simple tag to it using our happy birthday stamp and our, our number framelets. But let's dive right in. We are going to start off with today. I'm going to go ahead and use the all is, is it all is calm? Uh, what do they call it? Um, all is bright uh, Christmas designer series paper. I love this paper. Everything is realistic photos and and then on the back side I'm not going to be losing much with this one. So we're going to do it where this is our outside design. So we'll start there. Below this video you will see I will attach a PDF tutorial of this which includes a template I made up to make it easy to follow and and do this project so we're just gonna jump right in grab my stamp and trimmer so to start off what we need and you can do this with regular Whisper White, uh, eight and a half by 11, you will just have to uh, adjust it because your main piece needs to be 11 inches by 12 inches. So it's a lot easier just to have a full size 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So all we need to do on this one is cut to our 11 inch. When you're doing this, I will say keep in mind this sheet of paper isn't going to matter as much. If you are using a sheet of paper that has a top and a bottom, like you see here's the top of the ornaments, so you obviously want them to face upward. So take that into consideration when you are cutting your paper and how it's going to be uh, folded. And so I would say the the 11 inch side is going to be your upper. Okay, so we've got our 11 by 12 sheet of paper. And you can follow along with the tutorial and the template. So what we want to do is on our 11 inch side, our short side, we want to score at one and three quarter and then make sure you're using your scoring blade. I often um, mark mine because I'll mess up and cut a cut instead of score. I'm going to try to back out of this a little so you have a little bit better view. I don't know if it'll go back farther, but there we go. So we're going to do our first score line at one and three quarter. Our next one at three and a half. For it. Your next one is going to be at five and one quarter. You can do this if you have a scoring board too. I've just always used my stamp and trimmer. So that one's at five and a quarter. Now we're going to go to seven inches. And eight and three quarter. And our last one is at ten and a half. And now we're going to flip it to the 12 inch side. And we're going to score it at two inches. Line that up straight. So we scored at two inches. Then we're going to move it to 10 inches. And in 
we'll move that out of the way. Now we're going to take our bone folder and we're just going to burnish all of our score lines. Um, I'm the type of person when I score something, and I know this is going to be the outside, I always fold what I call mountain in, where the score is upward on the back side. It's, to me, it seems to fold straighter. It might just be a little quirky thing I have, but I always, I do the same when I'm folding my card bases. It's always what I call mountain in, is the direction I fold them in. You'll see when you're uh, using your designer paper, making sure these are scored not, or you know burnished nicely, is going to make trimming much easier. Okay, so we've got those. Let's do our ends here. Okay, now this is where I was talking about if you think that this is the top of your paper, like this would be the top of your ornaments here, because the ornaments are hanging, then at this point is where you'll choose your top and bottom. And it's on the short end, so your short end. So now what we're going to do is uh, on the template I created where you're going to be cutting out. Um, so the easiest way to do this, to, to get these rectangles that we need, we are going to take, and you could do it kind of either way. I'm going to do it on the side I can see. So I want to mark these along the top edge, because see we have a fold here. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to lay it on the top edge here. Find my pencil that ran away. Here we go. And now I just want to put a little pencil mark starting on the wide side. You know, we, we've got your tab over here. So we're actually starting without the tab, the small tab. So we're going to start at 7 8 And I'm just going to put a little pencil mark right in the middle. And two and five eighths. One, two, three, four, five eighths. I'm going to put a little pencil mark there. See if I can roll in on this for you. So we just did two and five eighths. And then we're going to do four and three eighths. Just going to mark the top there. Six and one eighth. Right there. Seven and seven eighths, right there, and then the last one at nine and five eighths. And what this is going to do is give you the center mark that you need to cut these little diamonds out. So then all you do is take your snips, which mine ran away. And on the diagram, I'll move back out a little for you. On the diagram, we're going to remove these two blue pieces, which, which are on your small tab here. And all you do, here's your score line right there. Just do a tiny little angle cut to the corner. And then cut along the small score line. Like that. We'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm do a little angle cut there to the corner. Cut along our score line. Oops, I could have cut that a little straighter. Huh? Okay, and now we have our little pencil marks here that are in the middle of each of the tabs. And sometimes it's a little hard to see. But you're going to cut from that middle line down to 
your score line. Oops, just that a little. Now down to where your score line is. See, there's your score line. And you're and then you've got another score line right here. So you'll cut from that center to the corner there. I'm gonna cut from this mark down to the corner. I have to say, when you're using regular cardstock, it is a little bit easier to see. But the designer stock is so pretty done this way. And it's a good way to use a scrap DSP you have, too. You could make these, I kind of call them wine bottle koozies, but they're wine bottle gift boxes. You could use them all year round. You know, use your old... Uh, Birthday designer paper, regular plain colors. You could use your Whisper White or a plain color and just stamp on it. Okay, so now we've got our, <coughs> our little points done. And a little trick I did, and I can't find my hole punch. You could use like a quarter inch circle hole punch. I'm going to use my crocodiles because I can't find my Stampin' Up! one. I did a class and I think it's there. What I do just for my own reference because when you're using a hole punch kennel with C is I'm just going to come in maybe quarter inch or so and I'm just going to put a little tiny dot where I'm going to want my holes. And you can even lay your ruler Lay your ruler across your dot so that you're all in the same spot. And then just put a little pencil mark right in the middle where you're going to put your holes. So I'm going to take my hole punch and I'm going to cut out. Damn it. Come here. Sliding away. And I'm going to cut out those little holes. Now these holes can be bigger depending on um, what size ribbon you are wanting to put through it. So it can be smaller or bigger depending on that. If it is going to be a bigger hole, I would suggest moving a little bit farther down into your diamond to avoid it from tearing when you're you know, tying it up or making it. Okay, so we've got that, and now what we're going to do, you can use your fast use for this, or you can use your tear and tape. I would suggest something strong because uh, you want it to stay together. But we're going to go ahead and trim our bottom, which on the template you will see, all we're doing is on the bottom scored edges, is we're just going to trim the line up to the score mark and that's going to make the bottom of our box so I'm going to go right up to the score line This where again where you burnished your folds makes it easier to find those. So now we have this little tab here and we're going to take this side and we're going to attach here. So what I do, I use my, my turn tape. I love fast use. It hates me. It really does. If anybody's got a trick, mine gets tangled right here. I always have to clean it because the glue gets stuck there. I wonder if I just use it wrong. But I love it. I just, it hates me. 
or it'll get all tangled up inside sometimes. So I think I'm doing it wrong. I'm going to have to check and see if somebody's got video on how to use fast views correctly. I'm sure Stampin' Up! probably does right on their page. I'm going to add two pieces to this, but I'm right at the fold there. See where I'm right at the fold? So I'm going to remove that. Oh my gosh, I cut my nails way down the other day because I'm, and now I can't do anything. I feel naked. Can't grab it. So I'm going to take that one off. And I want to add a second one so it comes right to the edge there. Just to make sure it's nice and secure. I mean, you're, you're using a really heavy bottle that you're putting in there. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to bring our other side up to it. We want to make sure it's level at the, the score marks. Right to your score there. Get down. Put it together. And there you go. Look at that. You have your box. Now, to do the bottom, I did find if you put a wine bottle in it, doing this bottom part is much easier. So we're gonna, I, this is just an empty wine bottle. Isn't it cute, though? This is a winery where I live. I'm, I'm kind of in the area of Washington. That's huge wine country. So, a lot of good wineries. I'm going to slide our bottle in there. Down to where our... Our score mark is. See how it folds right at the bottom there? Like that. And then what we're going to do, and I am so going to try my fast fuse for this because it's faster. I'm going to take the two opposites, the two opposite flaps. Make sure my bottle's where it needs to be. I'm going to try my fast fuse here if I can get it to work. I'm going to put fast fuse right along the edge here. Yeah, I think I do that. Okay. And then with your bottle in there secure, hold your flap and tape the other one right to the other flap. Okay. Now we're going to rotate and we're going to do the next two opposite tabs. Adhesive. Look at that, my fast fuse is working. I want to make sure my bottle's down tight and tape it together. And I got two left. When you alternate them like this, it just keeps it um, stronger on the bottom and gives you a good hexagon. So your bottom is going to end up looking like that. There you go, it's nice and secure. And then here you have your top where you're going to run your ribbon. Myself, I will start at my at my front hole and I'm going to come through the back side. Pull some through. And then oh, let me I'm going to go to the around and to the back. Well, how did I do that? I confused myself. So I'm going to go through the front side of this one. Oh, hold on. I have to trim my ribbon. It's frayed a little bit. So I just fold it a little bit. Put it through the front side of this hole. And then we're going to come through the back side of the next hole.
unless we're going to try to come through the back side of the hole. I'm trying to stay in camera, but still see what I'm doing here. Pull it through that side. And I kind of twist my ribbon to make sure it, it comes through straight. So you get the idea. And we're going to go now through the front. So you're alternating front to back. That one went through the front, go through the back. So we're going to go through the front of this last one. My ribbon got a little frayed on the end. And then adjust your ribbon to where you can cinch it up a little bit and tie your bow. And I'm a little short on this side, so I'm going to pull some through. I'm going to tie our little bow. You could, I would do it, my personally, I would do it with a little bit more ribbon like I did the other one, so you can have a nice, um, pretty big bow. So that one doesn't have many tails. So I would do my ribbon just a little bit longer. And then you could take and just create a tag, and you would attach it right to where your ribbon is. And there you go. You have the perfect little gift rack idea for your party going needs and gift ideas. It makes great to put under the Christmas tree too. I hope you enjoyed today and enjoy the rest of the blog hop. Make sure you leave a comment. Hashtag stamp it contest be entered to win a free prize. These ladies have done some amazing work. Please make sure you go buy their hops. You'll really enjoy it. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year from Tina's Crafty Inkspot. Bye-bye.